together in England? I, I heard that you guys were in bands before, that you knew each other before you guys became the, actually the feeling. We were like an original band that wasn't successful um, and we ran out of money, essentially. We were yeah. really young. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, we were the four of us, um, Kieran, Paul, Dan and myself, were in an original band together. And then when that didn't work, we became a covers band and went mm -hmm. to the French Alps. So we and that's when Kev got involved. So well, the three of us were in an original band together, but you stole them from me. That's true. Oh, yeah. The and first thing Kev ever said to me was <laughs> late in a after a gig that I did with Paul. I think it was the first gig that was Paul, and he comes up and just goes, "You stole my drummer." And we stole again. <laughs> and then and you then stole my brother. We stole his brother. <laughs> and then we stole himself. <laughs> <laughs> we stole. <laughs> we stole himself from his own band. Yeah. yeah. No one's in this band <laughs> anymore. Not, not that band doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah. It does. It's just nobody in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, did being a cover band? Um, help you guys artistically write songs? Well, I can't tell really. I mean, I don't know what kind of music we would have been writing if we hadn't done that. Mm -hmm. But it does feel like it was, a, you know, I mean, I've got to explain what it was, was us playing 10 shows a week. Each show was two hours, wow. really intense work and... Driving everywhere. I think it's just the, the, the amount of, sheer amount of time on stage you spend with a bunch of people helps you gel. And also having, you know, a lot of time playing very classic <coughs> pop music to crowds teaches you a lot about kind of what makes music work and what makes a crowd excitable and what makes them what pleases a crowd. As far as songwriting goes, that's just down to talent, basically. Right. And I don't think you can really learn how to write a song that you can connect with. Right, I agree. But you learn you learn about it's like expanding your palette, I suppose. Now your music has been been, been compared to um, Elton John and Supertramp. How do you guys feel about that? Was that something that you guys were that was a goal that you guys had in mind, or is that just sort of where it went when you guys started writing music? No, we weren't really going for anything. No, um, but I agree that it does sound a bit like it. I mean, I spent my youth listening to Yellow Brick Road and Captain Fantastic, and mm -hmm. two albums I listened to probably more than any other record when I was growing up. So I'm not surprised that my writing is informed by that a bit. Um, Supertramp, we, we, we just, you know, it's quite late we discovered Supertramp. I think we started sounding like Supertramp before we'd even known what they sounded like. Yeah. There's people like David Bowie and people that we don't often always mention. Mm -hmm. Who are influential and squeezed? Oh, because we'll listen to anything from Joe Jackson to yeah, Bob Marley or Bob Marley to Metallica. To Ray, you know, Rage Against the Machine. We're playing with a cello this year. Yeah, you guys are playing cello. You guys excited yeah, about that? Really excited. Ooh.